Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Welcome to Lorecast, where we talk about lore. I I am not a regular. We'll get into me in a second, but first, I've got to bring in the man, the myth, the legend, motherfucking Nick Johnson. Now, the thing that you might not know about Nick, actually, is the fact that Nick, his last name is actually Nick Darius. <laughs> The reason his name is Nick Johnson is because that's what your mom calls him. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Thank you for that. Nick Big Fat Johnson. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Sorry, Mom. I'm just kidding. (laughs) Okay. All right. Thank you for that beautiful intro. Um. Today with me, I have Beetle Milk. This is specifically Devin McRae from Beetle Milk Publishing. How are you doing today? Well, uh, I'm okay. I'm a little bit questionable about how many dick jokes I can put in one <laughs> stream on Twitch. A lot. A lot. <laughs> All oh right. My gosh. Challenge accepted, man. Challenge accepted, oh. but I know it's going to be hard. <laughs> there you go there's one right there there's some stiff competition <laughs> sorry okay i'm sorry nick i'm sorry, I'm sorry. no I'm that's totally fine this is this is the, the most interesting episode i think so far um so we are here today because this is a lore podcast we only talk about lore because um but not specifically any type of lore because we're not that specific which i mean i think is a little bit too broad to be honest because <laughs> no one wants okay. to st- no one wants to stream in for you know spider-man and the next they get like skyrim they're like whoa what the heck this came in but oh well it's fun so we're here to talk about your worlds that you have created my worlds yes (laughs) yes because there have been a few i have some of them with me today and i'll put them on camera in a second uh yeah see i don't see what's on camera so i mean you might be making a porn over there and i don't know man you're just interviewing me it's just just my face just my face I sent you the well, then that's the- basically a porn. Cause that's <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> All um. right. So, yeah, today we're going to we're going to uh, we're going to talk about some of the lore that uh, myself and my beautiful wife, Tatiana, have come up with throughout our career. Um, Nick, I should give you guys some background on this because mm. it's totally my job as a guest. <laughs> um, Nick has been a uh, homie of Beetle Milks since God knows when it's since like. I swear to God, ever since Jesus wrote his first brontosaurus, Nick has been into beetle milk, okay? <laughs> and all the way since the time where fucking Velociraptors and Fred Flintstone cavorted carelessly in the primordial soup, <laughs> up until seriously three days ago, uh, Nick has always been an avid supporter. Um, I think you guys should definitely take your time and uh, like and subscribe all his stuff because anybody who actually supports the indie scene is dope in my motherfucking book oh, okay gosh. and it's it's a it's a pretty short book <laughs> it's, it's, it's like dr seuss without the poetry oh okay gosh. but it's good times it's mm-hmm. good times so we could maybe so we can I, a, maybe like a little background first like where i met you because you know and maybe i'll give my side <laughs> i don't know we have an hour so <laughs> it's a long time for anybody who's listening or watching on any other thing the links are in the general channel in the discord yeah <laughs> yeah Oh, from your from yours, yeah, and mine too, maybe. Because I'm on the I'm on Instagram Live, and people are like talking to me, and then they're like dipping out as soon as they realize I'm not talking back. Oh like, gosh, I'm, they're like, like this just, guy. I'm like doing a motherfucking interview and stuff. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so, I met you guys first at uh, one of the Atlanta comic conventions. I believe it was one in February, so it wasn't the big one, but it was definitely one of the first ones of the year, t- probably 2017, I think. Because I think you had Psycho Babble one out, maybe two. I think I think when we did um when we did that first convention, I think it was just one, and then we had like the free maps that we were giving away, uh, uh with purchases and stuff. And um, did you did you get that map? Did you get your copy? I don't remember the map. I remember I bought some original art from you, and then Beat a Mil- or Psycho Babble one, and then the T shirt. Was it the second? Was it the second con we introduced maps? I, I I honestly that whole time frame was such a whirlwind <laughs> when me and Tatiana like I, I'm totally serious like me and Tatiana were like we're like uh we're like scared to death of like doing conventions mm. and then uh and then like we kind of grew up a little bit and got better at it but yeah so Atlanta Comic Con 
the, the small one was kind of where we cut our teeth though. Mm. And so, yeah, please continue your lovely, beautiful origin story. So that's where we, that's where I met them. Um, and I, there was, you guys were like right towards the front. So it was like the first thing I saw was like this nice pastel colors. And then you were very charismatic and pulled me in and you're like, Hey, what can I get you? And I was like, I like comics. <laughs> <laughs> let me buy this that's when i you guys were the first ones i really spent money on to get someone else's original story because i was like it was like right then and there i decided hey i'm the original nick show you know i could do some someone else's original art and present it to other people yeah it's uh, your show you do whatever you want to do you guys were the only <laughs> ones i did so far uh, and it's much appreciated. It was beautiful. I, I loved it. Me and Tatiana were so happy when we saw it. That I'll was so low that. quality. This is a lot better quality. I have a lot more expensive equipment laying around here. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to go back and watch this after, so I can just like totally like get off on the sound of my voice. Like, <laughs> God, Devin, you sound so sexy. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And then let's see. So I had talked to you guys into you know in between there a little bit met some other creators and then the next time i saw you guys in person was at momocon uh the following year i believe i didn't go oh, in... let's, let's not talk about momocon momocon 2018 it was terrible MomoCon that was was, was so it terrible it was I, terrible that's when i met uh joni miller <clears throat> the person you guys shared a booth next to she's cool ah uh, joni mm-hmm. hey, I have to, yo, i'm doing her hey. i'm doing her next <laughs> i'll try and get her on uh, me too uh no i'm kidding um <laughs> joni guys if you've never checked out joni miller like she is like not only one of the sweetest women i've ever met in my entire life she's just a total total darling mm. um she's also an incredibly talented artist and i have tried to get her to work with beetle milk and she just ain't having it she's oh, like gosh. she's like y'all ain't she's like y'all ain't cool enough yet like give it a few more years like get a few more drug charges underneath I'm totally oh kidding. my gosh uh, I'm totally kidding. There are no drug charges in Beetle Milk yet. Um, <laughs> yet. But the, uh, but no. Uh, so okay. So you met Joni Miller, who uh, was sitting next to us, and she's just an absolute darling. Mm-hmm. Joni Miller's amazing. So high five to her. Absolutely. Wherever yeah. she is. <laughs> uh, oh, I found her Patreon. There we go. <laughs> Dude, she's amazing. We actually, she did a, um, she did a collected edition of her um her main book mm-hmm. um apotheosis or apothea blah, blah, apotheta, the, <laughs> apotheosis mm. she did a collected edition we actually got that shit day one like nice. we pre-ordered wow. like because we're just like we're homies we, we yeah. fucking love her there's so many artists i met <clears throat> i had like a oh there it is Hold on. i got a book of like everyone's uh business cards that i've met over the years now at this point so many people that i've like promised to do some stuff for but i haven't yet you know i got jr mounts around here but it it was all around the time i met you guys is when i decided i'm gonna do something i'm gonna actually make some uh actually make some good content and that's when i started uh that's when i started to do the original nick show more seriously and um i tried to do the art thing i i tried to jump around to see what would stick the art like presentation was nice, but it didn't get me a lot of views and that was okay. And then I tried video game reviews that didn't work out. Um, the singing thing then, has honestly gone a uh, voice. I think and singing have gotten me farther than uh, most things. So that's why I decided to do the podcast separate and gaming separate too. So, cause you sing it's on uh, the original Nick show. That's like the last video I uploaded a while ago. All right, well, uh, you have to sing for me now. Sing. <laughs> no, sing, I... singing monkey. <laughs> Fucking sing. Oh, my gosh. I'll sing, I'll sing for you. You want me to sing? Okay, if you sing, I'll sing. If you sing, if you sing I'll sing. I'll sing. I'll sing. I'll okay, sing. all right. This is going to be the worst. This is going to, like, all your viewers are about to fucking bolt. All right, but here goes. <clears throat> okay, okay. And I don't have plans and schemes. All right, there you go. I sang. Okay, there you go. <laughs> I sing since I don't have you by Guns N' Roses. Okay, <laughs> okay. okay right, I'll, sing, I'll sing like the first, uh, the first line of "I can't help falling in love with you" by Elvis Ooh, Presley. Good pick. <laughs> Wise men say only fools rushing, but I can't help 
falling in love with you. <laughs> Someone left the stream. <laughs> I just saw that. <laughs> that was beautiful. Dude, I thought you sounded great. Fuck that person that left the stream. <laughs> oh, Unless gosh. it was your mom, in which case, sorry. No, no she does, she, uh, she'll she watch it on the, the channel when it comes out. Maybe. <laughs> if I put it to Facebook. My grandma's going to watch it. She'll be like, Nicholas. <laughs> But, Nicholas, why do you have this filthy mouth human on here? Oh, she's heard me say cuss words when I did my Nick reads, my voice acting stuff. Um, all right, so that's enough of the intro, I think. And I haven't really met you guys. I haven't seen you guys in person in a while because, you know, you guys were allow- around where I was in the Atlanta area, but now you guys have moved to the north. Well, north, Tennessee, more, more north, <laughs> back where so I come, back where I come we from. We move less south. Um, less, uh, less examples of people fucking their sisters. So that's cool. <laughs> Not the part of the Chattanooga. I come from Chattanooga. That's where I was born. So no way you're from, you're from Chattanooga. Yeah. That's where I was born. So <laughs> some stuff happened. Dude, there. they got the sweetest aquarium up in that piece, yeah, dude. It's everyone, so cool. everyone loves the aquarium there. Even uh, I they, were, dude, they yeah. have a whole section dedicated to nothing but fucking turtles. It's like the coolest thing. I'm in there. I'm like a five year old kid. I'm like, look, it's a fucking turtle. It's a turtle. It's a turtle. Oh, it's gosh. A <laughs> I got a turtle at home, right? So I'm like, Ooh. it's Spartacus's cousin and brother and sister. <laughs> and you know, like, I'm just like, I, dude, I don't know, man. Like, you catch me in an aquarium, you catch me in like a zoo or something. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm a child, bro. I, I revert back to when I was a little buck tooth zit covered science nerd who all i ever knew how to talk about was jurassic park like that's what i revert back to and i'm just like i'm just like oh my god it's the cool but uh, on one last thing on this thing Mm -hmm. uh, because i think it's i think it's fun um i have loved dinosaurs since i was a kid because of jurassic park since 1993 Mm -hmm. i've been obsessed with dinosaurs and what happens is is i've I, i actually have really never been to a museum of natural history and seen dinosaur bones in person Mm. until i lived walking distance from one when i was in los angeles but the problem was was that it cost 25 dollars to get in <clears throat> and i was broke mm. so <clears throat> one day me and tatiana finally scrapped together the spare change to go into this museum of natural history and i saw a t-rex skeleton in person for the first time in my life yeah and bro you should like change I, your life I, I was like, oh my God. Like I stood in front of it and just like Tatiana was like, okay, you're ready to go. I'm like, no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. We're standing here go for over another there. hour. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm hanging out with my, with my friend Rexy over here. Okay. We're hanging out. And, and so, uh, we, uh, I stood there and in my head, because I've been studying and loving dinosaurs my entire life, I put the, I put the muscle on the bones and then I put the skin on the muscle and I like mm. got all this stuff and I built it in my head. So that like I had a T-Rex standing in front of me and I got scared oh, and I was like, I was like, this is the scariest creature to ever walk the planet. This I thing actually itself. existed at one point. Yeah, exactly. And the cool thing is, is if you have enough money, Hey, mm. everybody watching this and listening to this, look, <laughs> it costs about maybe 45 million for a fully done T-Rex skeleton. That's Ooh. real and authentic. I need 45 million going on GoFundMe tomorrow. GoFundMe.com slash <laughs> Give Devin a complete vanity fucking thing that has actual no applicable use and he can't fit in his apartment. <laughs> Let's do this. All oh right. gosh, that'd be that'd be fun though. That'd be fun. It, All right. It, All right. Go, you go ahead. You can finish. Real quick. I was just gonna say. I was just gonna say that uh, the cool news is you can get a Triceratops for like three million. Ooh, so I'm three yeah, million. Yeah, yeah like you, no a problem. full blown tri. There's a there's a website that deals in fossils and you can get Ooh. shit like. Like your cool shit, like horseshoe crabs and stuff like that. But you can get like full blown, like megalodon teeth is like fifty thousand or something, like a, like a big old jawline of a megalodon. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> it's like shouldn't this shit be in a, a museum? Like, but sure, give it to me. I'll, I'll take it. I'll I'll rock the megalodon teeth. I'll, when people come over and they talk shit about my comics, I'll just fucking put their head in it and just like snap it down. <laughs> and... Like you want to talk about my comics again? Hmm? Yeah. Then they don't well, like not, Your head just fucking rolled down yeah. my. Mo- solid marble floors like you know like <laughs> <laughs> with my grecian pillars straight from athens <laughs> yeah, those weren't in a museum either they oh my gosh oh 
and hey, before you leave, make sure to like actually get into side King Tut sarcophagus. Like it's like super cool, and like seriously, I don't know. The insulation is just wonderful. It's super hot outside, but <laughs> for some reason, King Tut had like expert cooling back in Egypt. Like I'm just nice. like I'm into this. Let's party. His body's in there, so make sure to shift it over. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That was a nice intro. Actually, that was pretty good. So. What would you like to talk about first? Your current runnings or the or your things that have not gone to plan? Maybe we could go with uh maybe the failures first and then like the the rise after. I don't call them failures. I call your, them successes waiting su- to happen. Okay, your successes waiting to happen. Absolutely. Well, some of these are collectors pieces and I have them, so. Yes, they are. No one they else are is collector's get them. pieces cuz they are uh, right they're now. no longer in print. Here. Um, uh, the funny thing about collector's pieces that people forget though and it's just so funny to me is it's a supply and demand situation mm-hmm. so basically i could snap my fingers right now and have a hundred issues of psychobabble you like could, I could. you could <laughs> i could I'm, I'm sitting on this but, mountain of money and then all of a sudden <laughs> <laughs> but i but i'm not going to because i really like the idea of people having something that's so strictly limited mm. so um so psychobabble we sold a few hundred copies but it's cool stuff. So uh, when Nick talks about my failures, my future successes, <laughs> Your successes. <laughs> he is referring to the comic Psycho Babble. Now, uh, Beetle Milk, when we first got started, uh, just a short history, basically what happened was uh, we, me and Tatiana met in college, blah, blah, blah. All this stuff happened. We uh, got kicked out of our places. We were homeless. We moved into an apartment. It was a uh, super dope uh, studio apartment. Tatiana, uh, unfortunately, couldn't stay in college. There were some problems with that. And so she kind of languished in misery for like a month or two. It really sucked. And then like <clears throat> what happened was one day, Tatiana, um, she introduced this concept to me, this concept of this place called Sunflow. And in Sunflow, the sun never goes down. It's stuck in the sky, right? And so she showed me a map that she had, and she showed me like sketches for, for characters. And... <clears throat> she um she asked me what I thought and I was like, yo, it's dope. Like it's really cool. And um she's asleep behind me right now, actually. <laughs> she's passed out. Um, but she uh I was like, it's really dope. And so I I, I kind of was like, cool. So make a comic. She was like, I want to make a comic. I was like, make a comic. She's like, no, I want to make a comic and I want you to write it. Oh. <clears throat> and I was like, how the fuck am I supposed to write a comic? I've never written a comic. I don't know shit about writing comics. Like, but you got to understand, I'd only been with her for maybe, God, it had to have been six months at this point. By the way, next month on the 10th, we're celebrating six years. Oh, congratulations. Yes. Wow. Thank you. It's been a pretty cool six years. But um, we hadn't been together very long at this point. And so, like, just, like, put yourself in my shoes, Nick. Mm-hmm, I You've got this really attractive woman <laughs> who, for some reason, lives with you and likes you and oh hangs God. out with you. I know, right? And, and she's like, okay, let, let's do something together to spend time together that you're completely unqualified to do on every level. Let's do that. And I'm, and I, so my dumb ass, I'm like, I'm like, okay. <laughs> oh, my comment. gosh. But the thing is, is that I found that um, I actually do have a knack for writing, mm-hmm. and I'm very proud of it, and I'm proud of what we made together. And so, um, it started out like it started out like um, we. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of divert from the history a little bit and kind of give you guys. Actually, I want to give you a lesson in writing because I think it's like the most important thing ever. Mm-hmm. So, like anybody who's trying to write anything, listen up. If it's fiction. <clears throat> All great fiction, all great fiction is based around one of two things, okay? And you can see it in pretty much any great fiction. It's either based on a question or it's based on a scenario. One scenario that you build the rest of the book around, okay? So, Psychobabble was based on a question. And that question is, if there is a God, do you want to meet them? Okay, that was the question that the entire comic was built around. And so um, we told the story in a weird way. And um, what it was, was actually the main story happened in interludes, like the main plot drivers were done in interludes. And then like the other stuff was was meant to be kind of just like its own story. So they're like two interwoven Mm storylines, but then they all collide at the end. 
And uh, we got four issues in and we realized that there were a lot of continuity problems and we retconned some stuff. And we were like, dude, if we've got a retcon stuff in the first four issues, like we maybe need to work on our mythology a little bit. So, but um, it, it was a very interesting question to answer. And um, the God that we created to answer that question, Ziggy, was a very fascinating character and we made him ruthless. Like he killed indiscriminately like he was just like a total douchebag he was a cat and ziggy was based on a real cat like ziggy is based on tatiana's actual no shit real life cat mm. so it's really cool but um it uh it's just really it's, it's hard to explain exactly how it all came about but what i can tell you about it is that it was all based around that fundamental question and um we i don't know if i've told you nick but we're actually um uh, since then, I've written other comics. I've written three other comics mm -hmm. since then, um, and they're all going to see release Ooh. pretty soon, hopefully, if fucking artists working on them will finish my assets. Uh. <laughs> and we're going to... Um, so I've got a little bit more experience at it. So me and Tatiana sat down not too long ago, and we were like, yo, um, actually, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself because you guys are hearing about this stuff. You don't even know what Psycho Babble is about. Psycho Babble is about a group of animals... Um, they're anthropomorphic and they live in a world with anthropomorphic animals and they um, they uh, basically catch the attention of Ziggy, the, the cat god. And um, they also have to deal with sociopolitical issues like the termites uh, who are the police and the police force is incredibly corrupt and they have to deal with all these different forces. And the, the eventual end goal of the comic was actually to uh, give them godhood. Mm. So um, that's what it all was leading up to was this final showdown with Ziggy and the Star Eater, who, uh, spoiler alert, was Aurelius, Ziggy's brother, um, was the Star Eater who corrupted Oliver. And um, it, uh, it, what it was going to end up with was Oliver betraying them and getting killed by uh, Grayson and Red, and then Grayson and Pepper ascending to godhood. Ooh. So that was, that was the ending that was planned. Um, it didn't work out like that, obviously, but, um, so when we first started writing the comic though, what was interesting about it was Tatiana actually kind of taught me a lot about writing. Like, for example, she said, she asked me one day, how do physics affect this world? Mm. Like, are the physics the same as they are on earth? That's something you don't really think about. You yeah, know what I mean? Like, that's true. What are the physics? And so like, it's like gravity is the gravity the same. Do the, do the, does the water have tides? Does it go in and out? The um, what do people eat? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean. Like, uh, what are the society, the societal interactions? You know, so wolves mm -hmm. were like considered like they had they suffered like serious prejudice, and then um the cats were like the gods, and then like higher mammals besides wolves were kind of royalty, and then roosters also got in our royalty. So Grayson was real spoiled and stuff like that because mm -hmm. he he was basically royalty, um but he rebelled against it. And um, and so like you got to like really think about all of those things. Um, the biggest mistake that I see a lot of writers making though when they write anything is they write um a, a character around a story, and the opposite is true. You need to write the the story around the character, mm. and you got to like really get in their head and like be like, okay, well, how would this person react in this situation? So um, it's just it's it's cray cray, and um, there's a lot. It's it's a lot more than an hour to explain that, but um, it's uh. So anyway, we're rebooting it. We're we're uh, using all the knowledge that we've gained since that original run. We're actually creating a new psychobabble. Uh, it's called the Divine Illness, mm. and um, it's actually going to be based on. Okay, so the idea, like the question, is is suffering, um is suffering like the meaning of life hmm. okay that's the question and so we made a character the saint of anguish who believes that it truly is and so he will unleash hell upon sunflow and uh grayson and all the other guys the whole crew will be back and they okay, will be good. yeah 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 that you, you know like you gotta well not only that but i mean are you seriously gonna expect me to create a whole new suite of characters like fuck it was hard yeah absolutely to not. the original ones right oliver caldwell was a clever joke okay i'm sorry 
for anybody who's watching this that's a science nerd, Oliver Caldwell was a lizard. Then we had a vagina monster named Braxton Hicks. I'm just fucking saying. These were clever puns. The the deer was named Peppercorn for fuck's sake. Okay, so they, uh, they're they all coming back, and they're going to take on not Ziggy, but the Saint of Anguish. And I don't want to spoil the ending because the ending is oh, written. absolutely not. I'm ready. I'm ready to all delve right. into the story and get ready. Then you have to come back. Okay. See, if you don't spoil it, you have to come back. And you get to be uh, on well, again. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll come back. I mean, I'll come back anytime. I'll come back every week. You want me to? Your other co hosts probably get annoyed with me, but I mean, I'll hang nah. out. I don't care. Um, <laughs> but the, uh, I mean, I'm just, I'm saying, I would love to. But what I'm saying is, is um, at the end, that question, the question of is suffering like the meaning of life and is suffering, does suffering have a higher purpose will be addressed very clearly using the character of the Saint of Anguish and using the other characters. So, um, as you probably can tell, it's already a bit more planned out than the original Psycho Babel was. Um, and it's uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. And we've already got the first issue drafted. Tatiana's just got to finish the assets. But she's like got super high artistic ambitions for it. Like she wants every frame to be its own work of art. Mm-hmm. So it, it takes longer. Speaking of comics that every frame was a work of art, the next comic we released on Kickstarter... Um, and it successfully funded uh, your homeboy and my Nick here actually yeah. got the highest here on the Kickstarter. Yeah, I, I had to. I had to spend the most money. Dude's a big dick baller, dude. Um, <laughs> That's why I have no money. That's why I have no money because I keep spending <laughs> on you guys. I'm not fucking liquid right now, man. I'm too big. Shit. Um, <clears throat> was the Roadkill Club. Mm-hmm. And the Roadkill Club was interesting because um, – we actually had to solve a lot of problems to make it. <clears throat> For example, um, once again, when you got to think of the physics of the world, you got to think about the physics of the characters, right? So, for example, we need our characters to communicate, but animals don't talk, right? Mm-hmm, that's true. So, to give you dudes a quick synopsis, basically, what Rogue Hill Club was about um, was uh, the spirit of the forest in the back roads of Georgia was having a problem with somebody in a red truck running over animals intentionally. Now, normally this isn't a big deal. It happens all the time. But the red truck got such a body count that the spirit of the forest had to step in. The problem is is that the main rule of being the spirit of the forest is you cannot impinge on humans. Um, The spirit is completely banned from dealing with human stuff. So, like... If you're the spirit of the force that's all power being and you see a cement road, she can't walk on t- like she's completely banned. Mm. And uh, I don't know if it's by another higher power uh, that's even higher than her or if it's just by age old witchcraft. I'm not sure. Um, even as the creator, I'm not sure exactly. Mm. Uh, and I kind of don't want to explain it. I kind of want to leave it, you know, kind of like it is. But <clears throat> um, so she uh, what she does is she decides that she was going to take the red truck's victims um, who were roadkill and um, have them face him. So she resurrects a raccoon. Now, interesting real life fact is that raccoon was based on a raccoon that we saw dead on the side of the road on the way home from my grandma's house one day. That raccoon actually existed and uh, he was a chub chub and our raccoon was a chub chub. Um, in the comic, and uh, so wherever that raccoon is and whatever afterlife, I hope he appreciates being immortalized in a comic. Mm. So, uh, raccoon. cute little raccoon. So, um, so basically, the raccoon has the power to um, give life force to other animals that were killed by the red truck. The raccoon organizes a crew of uh, about 20 30 animals. There's everything's in there, by the way. There's bear and deer and turtles and bunny rabbits, the whole thing. They're all there. It's just rather, it's a, it's a menagerie. And, uh, and uh, they seek to unravel the mystery of the red truck and mm-hmm. why he's doing the things that he's doing. Now, we're only on issue one right now. Issue two is currently in production. Mm-hmm. Can't wait for um, that one. I know, I, I know why the red truck's doing it already, mm-hmm. of course. Mm-hmm. But, um, what I can tell you about it is that um, is that uh, at the end of issue one, the last thing you see in the entire issue is a child uh, who is dead. 
And um, the reason why this child exists in the world of the comic is actually because of a problem. Mm. And the problem is, is what happens if we have the Roadkill Club track down the red truck and find him and they can't communicate with him? Right? Like, this is a huge problem. It was like a huge issue logistically with making the comic. So we decided we needed a human character. And so um, that kid, Jacob, mm. will join the Roadkill Club. I'll spoil that for you. Ooh. He will join the Roadkill Club. And he has his own reasons for being there. Um, but the reason why he is able to be resurrected is because he is also Roadkill. <gasps> yes. Yes, he is Roadkill. That could be gathered from the comic. Everyone go buy this comic, by the way. I don't want to yeah, show you. On, I don't want to show you every page. It's on. It's on beetlemilk.com. Uh, it's it's for sale right now. You can go buy it. The oh, Rogue Kill. The Rogue Kill Club, which is a Kickstarter success uh, story, and um, it's just uh, it's a lot of fun, and uh, I like it a lot. But actually, I got a funny story about it. So the Rogue Kill Club, because it mostly does with animals, we decided that the animals, once again, solving logistical problems on the spot. We decided that the animals were going to speak in the language of the dead. And the language of the dead is essentially emoji, okay? Or hieroglyphs. So mm -hmm. um, what happens is at my old job, I bring in, an epi uh, I bring in the issue of the Road Kill Club because I'm, like, proud, right? Like, uh, like I, yeah, I made absolutely. this. Like, you know, I'm proud. So um, somebody takes a look at it, and they're flipping through it, and they're like, oh, the art's amazing. That's really cool. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, my wife drew it. And they're like, oh, cool. What would you do? And uh, I was like, I was like, I, I wrote it. And so they like look through it and they're like, what do you mean wrote? What do you, <laughs> like, what do you mean? Cause there's like no dialogue, right? Because apparently story doesn't mean shit. Apparently as long as I have a bunch of no. animals running around. Like, oh my God. <laughs> dude, if that was, that, that kind of hit me where I heard a little bit. I was like, oh <laughs> man, like, okay, fine. I'll put dialogue in the next one. Jesus Christ. Nah, you don't um, have to. The one I'm really looking forward to, though, is actually uh, Disco Infernal, which um, Brian Melgar uh, is. Uh, it's his. Like he he created the main character Elagos, uh, who's a demon who's like so sweet and nice. The Satan kicks him out of hell to learn how to be like. This is literally like we're right. This is in production. Uh, Satan kicks him out of hell to uh, to learn how to uh, be wicked. And so in order to give him lessons on how to be wicked, uh, Elagos is sent to the only place on Earth that you really could learn that really well, and that is, of course, New Jersey. So um, <laughs> the comic takes place in New Jersey, and the Jersey Devil is Elagos's uh, boss at, uh, at Scrubway, right? <laughs> so Elagos, he, he works at Scrubway because he's got to make a living, and uh, he gets in a bunch of misadventures. The cool thing about Disco Infernal that I'm really looking forward to you guys seeing, though, is that uh, it's not a kid's comic. It's Ooh. very, very, very adult. In the first episode, uh, a pedophile tries to rape him. Oh. Um, because Elagos is a little, he's a little, he's the size of a kid. But he's an adult, but he's the size of a kid. Hmm. And dude doesn't understand the concept of pants, so he's always naked. So, freaking, uh, so, uh, like, a uh, pedophile, Pedro, Pedro, uh, Pedro the pedophile tries to rape him. And uh, Eligos, I'm just going to spoil this one part. Eligos straight up pukes lava on him and dissolves him from oh the waist down. Oh my gosh, I'm ready for this. this. It's vicious, dude. It's so vicious. And the funny thing is, is like when we first started writing it, we decided that it was going to be uh, very, very adult. But even despite that, I still had jokes get cut for being too offensive. <laughs> like I was like, I was like, ah, come on. Like, come on. There was, there was one that was like, it took a little bit of like knowledge about um, uh, Islamic culture, like Muslim culture to like get. Otherwise, it looked racist. And so we decided not to use that one because it, you had to have a little bit of knowledge in order to understand it. Mm. And then we put a bunch of like funny in jokes in it, right? Like we put like um, one is um, one is somebody breaks a Ouija board. And somebody says, don't worry, I got some Elijah Bond in the back, right? Because Elijah Bond <laughs> sounds like glue. Yeah. But Eli Elijah Bond is the creator of the Ouija board. Oh, right? my gosh. So we put like a bunch of a stupid jokes joke. in there like that. They were like super. Or there's this one part where um, where I'm so proud of this joke, dude. 
I dude, like, oh my god, I'm so proud of this joke. Satan is talking to Eligos, and he's like, while you're in Jersey, get go to a church and get me some tips on interior decoration because fire and brimstone is so like 1396 or something like that. And so like and like it's funny or whatever and like but the thing is is that actually believe it or not fire and brimstone did not get introduced into christian mythology until whatever year satan says uh before that um hell was just kind of a really shitty place and then this one preacher like made it into a thing that you like burn in hell uh that year Mm. and so like that's why that's why like i made that joke And like, so I got like a bunch of like, cause I've been reading books on demonology and hell lore since I was a kid. And so like, I got like all these jokes that are like based on demonology and hell lore, dude. I got, I got a collection of occult books in my apartment that would Mm. make my grandma turn in her grave. Oh my gosh. And she's not even dead yet. Okay. Oh (laughs) oh my gosh. (laughs) I'm just saying, dude, like (laughs) I'm talking about books that are like cursed and shit. Like I, my iPad is just full of like, I like I like get on I like get on like in like public and I hope somebody reads over my fucking shit. No, they look over your shoulder like "Mm." Yeah. Mm. It's like it's like huh. So the way you summon the way you summon Furfur is by fucking uh, burning a cat? Jesus. Oh my gosh. (laughs) I'm making that up. I'm totally making that up. I'm totally kidding. I'm totally kidding. The 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 Ars Goetica actually does list ways that you can summon demons, but I haven't seen anything about summoning um about killing innocent little kitty cats just yet. So oh. I'm assuming that's not a part of it. Good. Cats are my favorite. Dogs are mine. Turtles are my, my favorite, actually. My Dogs cat was right just on turtles. stream. She was out here. But she, well, she's got to look out for fur fur. <laughs> Speaking of fur fur, fur fur is actually another joke from there because uh, Eligos' dog is fur fur. But Furfur is an actual demon, and if you put him in a triangle, he has to tell the he has to tell the truth. So he can talk, and he can, has to tell the truth. So what we did was we made Furfur. We designed him to have a triangle collar. Oh my and so, gosh! So he's going to be kind of the straight man. Like he's going to be kind of like the like the like, um, like Eligos is kind of just like ditzy and dumb and like oh, a derpy derpy derp, so innocent like SpongeBob. And then Furfur is going to be a little bit more like Squidward. <laughs> and I didn't really, I didn't, I didn't actually realize that we were kind of mirroring that archetype until literally just now. I just, oh, gosh. I'm going to have to rewrite fur fur. Um, <laughs> I ain't trying to, I'm trying to, you know, it goes to your thighs. Then you explode. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> you like crabby patties. You like, no, I'm patties, sorry. Don't you Squidward? I love SpongeBob, man. I adore SpongeBob. Mm. All right. What's next? What do you, what do we want to talk about next? So let's see. We talked about Psycho Babble, then Rogue Club, and then what's this one? Uh, Inferno? Disco, Disco Infernal. Inferno. Uh, Infernal. Okay, good. I didn't want to say Disco Inferno and <laughs> bring up that song or whatever. That song is dope, and so is The Wrestler. <laughs> Fight me in real life. <laughs> Disco Infernal. Okay. Do you have anything else in the works? I have on camera um, some of your dessert beetle pins i have the cake one it's really cute oh my god we got okay so basically what happened guys was we were doing these comics and stuff and it was cool and we were doing conventions making a little bit of spare change and shit but online like nobody knew who we were and nobody liked us and we were just nobody wanted to play with wampus um so what happened was we did this kickstarter for dessert beetles which Mm -hmm. nick is uh showing off um, allegedly, I, I no, don't know. It, it's at right the here. It's right in now. my hand. It's in my hand. Uh, we had this Kickstarter and it failed so hard. It felt like guys, it like, we got, we got owned. We got roasted. Like Kickstarter collectively said, Oh, well there's this new pocket pussy coming out. So uh, we're going to fund <laughs> that and fuck y'all and your stupid fucking dessert beetles. And, um, so what happened was after that, after, the, after that happened, me and Tatiana sat down and had a real talk. And that real talk was about quitting. Like, Ooh, like i didn't just know like, you guys were that close yeah dude we were on the brink because mm. like you gotta understand like we both spend all of our extra money like i i work beetle milk full time now but at the time i wasn't i was um i was i was doing i was working for some internet marketers who are dope sauce and i love them to death and um so what ends up happening is like is like we dude we are not poor right 
Mm. We're kind of poor now because I'm working Beetle Muck full time and I'm still trying to get all the <sighs> profits up and stuff like that. And, you know, Nick can only donate so much every month. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Start um, we're not, we're not, Start we're kidding, I've been considering it, but oh, I haven't figured out. We, we'll, we'll talk about that later. But, you'd have, um, you'd have me on that. I have a Patreon. No one's, <laughs> oh, yeah. It, oh, you're talking about the old Patreon. Yeah. See, that doesn't work. But, oh, um, that's true. What happened is, um, is we were seriously considering quitting and uh, because we dump all of our money into Beetle Monk, right? When you mm. guys, you got to understand that that run of dessert beetles cost like five, six hundred dollars to make, okay? Like it was a lot of money. That is not chump change when you're just an it's, indie group just trying yeah. to get your name out there. So we made it, we made the dessert beetles. We did a Kickstarter video, man. We did the whole motherfucking thing. And then like like 10 people back. Yeah. <laughs> it was like the worst thing. So Kickstarter collectively says suck a dick. And so we um, sat down and we had a talk and we're like, do we even need to do this? We got good day jobs. We can make good money. We can put some behind, get a house, you know, get a dog and 2.5 kids and like all that good stuff. <laughs> Maybe not the kids, but the, oh, you know, the rest of it. We can abduct 2.5 kids. Uh, and <laughs> live with them until the cops find us um so when but uh what happened was um i had an idea and that idea was to turn our focus to something i found infinitely more interesting than bugs and that was occult stuff and uh so now we sell like fucking voodoo shirts and oh yeah i've got your i've got your tarot i have one of your tarot cards here i'm gonna show that yeah the holographic tarot cards the cool thing about the tarot cards is we actually decided to give them away free with every order. Nick did not buy that. He got it free with his order. Um, and uh, we give them away. And that is not cheap, by the way, but it's a long-term investment in our fans because we, we, we think that fans will catch on and want to get an entire deck of holographic cards. So. Yeah, I wish. <laughs> I'll buy the whole pack when you get them, when you put them up. Well, we will put out a whole pack, but it won't be all. <laughs> yeah. It'll be just a normal pack. Just but normal. um, the... Uh, the holographic tarot cards and all that stuff. So we shifted, but the irony that I was telling Nick before the show is that like dessert beetles is like one of the highest sellers on our entire website. Mm. Like, it's like, dude, we got all this dope shit. Like guys, we changed for you. We changed for you. We like changed our entire business model. Y'all like, nah, we want the old shit. <laughs> <laughs> this has gotta be how Eminem feels. When nobody listened to the Slim Shady LP when it first, or the Slim Shady EP when it came out, mm. and everybody's like, ah, Slim was better during the Slim Shady EP or Slim whatever. You know, like, Slim Shady. Um, but that's got to be not all, all the other stuff sells really well too. Like, I'm not, I'm not saying it doesn't sell well, but mm. Dessert Beetle does move and it's fucking amazing and funny because it's validation. It's val, it's absolutely validation, and so um. I'm super stoked on it. And once it started selling, I was just so happy. It's also the best product photography I've ever done in my life. If you look at the dessert beetle. Yeah, I got to pull uh, it up. It looks real good. Yeah, dude. I, that was me. That was me in a light box and an iPhone. Right right there. Nice. It's fucking dope sauce. Dude, you should see my live stream on Instagram. My hair is like so fucked up right now. It's like so weird. It's like sticking straight up. It's so dope. <laughs> I'm not talking... Everybody's dipping out of my live stream because I'm not talking to them because I'm too busy talking to you. But I, uh, I don't know. I thought it might be funny to watch somebody do a one-sided interview. <laughs> um, <laughs> but the um, but uh, no, it's um, it's just cray, man. I don't know. Like the whole thing just mm-hmm. it's just it's it's just been a really really crazy ride, and like, and now we're like we're like doing really well, and like our our income, our monthly income from the um, I. You should know at my old job, I was not a low paid person. Ooh. And my our monthly income from the business is actually getting to the point where it's almost replaced it. So it's nice. it's close. Wow. That's really good. I'm really I'm really proud of you guys. Thank you. I'm very proud as well. Um I'm pretty stoked on it, to be honest with you. Um I'm glad to be a small, tiny little part of it. <laughs> you are not a tiny part of it at all. That's that's just Oops. not that's not true. Mailing that's you not hundreds true. of dollars. <laughs> Yeah, just 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 fucking just shoot it over, man. Just buy everything on the site, my dude. Like you're oh, you're not honestly. only does your girlfriend need some beetle milk swag, but your mom needs some beetle milk swag. Yeah, your cousin needs some beetle milk. Your cat needs some beetle milk swag. She does. My little cat needs them. I'm telling you, your cat, man, your cat wants to read some comics, my dude. She needs, like, a, that's just a... she needs a sticker for her iPhone case. That's all. <laughs> 
<laughs> I think I think the Sam Hain would work very well for her, considering it's cats. Oh my gosh. Um. I, I'll, but by the way, I pronounced that incorrectly. I think it's like Sam Wayne or something. I don't know. Mm. I'm, I just make the merch. I don't know anything about anything. Um. That's also not true. I'm actually pretty well researched. But uh, so that's kind of what's going on, and um, it's been a very just. It's been very cool, and the comics are a really cool aspect. We kind of. When we started the Eden line, we kind of eased off the comics mm. because like the thing is like I've got comics in production, but they're all in like various stages. So like, for example, there's one. Um, it's uh, Sam, you're listening to Twitch in the background. All right. <laughs> what up, homie? Sorry, uh, Sam hit me up on the Instagram live. Yeah. And so um, <laughs> basically what happened is um, is like uh, I got another one in production. It's called Pink and uh, and and it's it's really cool it's about a nightmare hunter in a world where nightmares came to actual life mm. but the last like thing i'm working on that i wanted to talk to you guys about is actually something that is not announced it is not almost nobody knows about it i it's talked to nick briefly about it it's before the show it's an exclusive man. this is completely exclusive <gasps> okay <laughs> i'm working on it now remember when i said earlier that when you're writing you need to base it on a question I wanted to point or a scenario. I wanted to point out some great works that started with a question. The Killing Joke started with the question of, mm. "Can you drive one man insane in one day from a really bad day?" Right. Um, Stephen King's The Langoliers started with a vision that he had of an airplane with an open window. Was mm. how it started. It wasn't a question, but uh, V for Vendetta was the question of where is the line between vigilante and terrorist. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So all of these Absolutely. all of these have this like central question that they kind of seek to answer. I am very very fascinated with the resurrectionist. I think it's the coolest fucking idea on the planet, which is basically that these dudes back in the day like stole bodies for doctors, okay? I'm just like mm -hmm. super into this. I think it's the coolest idea ever. I wanted to know what would it be like if resurrections resurrections existed in in the far future Ooh. so that's the question and so like understand that when i asked that question i had to start answering my own question for example a resurrectionist would need to exist in the future no the reason they existed originally is because it was illegal to do autopsies on dead bodies it was just completely illegal mm -hmm. you couldn't do it and so doctors couldn't study, study human bodies. I don't know if you guys know this, but back in the day, doctors' knowledge was based on dead animals. Like they would autopsy animals and then try to apply it to humans because they couldn't get authorization to, um, mm -hmm. to work on humans. So eventually that changed and the law changed. And then, um, and then so resurrections kind of faded out because they weren't needed anymore. Um, they were body snatchers, right? Mm -hmm. Not grave robbers. Grave robbers steal valuables. Body snatchers steal um bodies mm -hmm. okay for doctors so I, I thought about it and i was like okay well in the future medical science will be far along enough where it won't be needed right but i really want to do a cyberpunk almost uh resurrection story i really think it'd be cool so i was like okay here's what happens by the year 3000 all rare earth metals have been mined. Okay, so basically what happens is we start putting cybernetics in our body and then we run out of metal. So the resurrection is the reason that they go dig up those bodies is actually to extract the cybernetics from them. You see what I'm saying? So Absolutely. that's 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 why they're needed, right? That's why there's a resurgence in it because the, they, they need to get the components. And we're already seeing that, by the way, in our modern world. It's not too far-fetched. We're already seeing it with like iPods. They stopped making iPod classics because it contained rare earth metals that you just can't find anymore. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So starting answering questions like that, and then you start getting into the stuff. So that's like the overworld stuff, right? Like the, the, the kind of like the environmental stuff. And then you start getting into questions like, what does the world look like? What does your city look like? Who is the character? What is their personality? Mm -hmm. My resurrectionist is going to be a day one resurrectionist on his first body snatching. Ooh, yeah, he's gonna. It's gonna be his first one, and it's gonna go horribly, terribly wrong. I like that. And, that um, sounds good. It's cool. It's a great way to set it up. Like he's gonna like use like futuristic tools to like open up the 
you know, the sealed coffin because in the future they learn ways to seal coffins really well where you don't have to worry about the worms because people are so scared of being eaten by worms. <laughs> so like it's going to it's like, dude, so he's going to use that shit and it's going to be like all futuristic and shit. And you're going to get a real good view of like the world. And then um, you're going to, um, and then he's going to just, it's just completely fuck up. It's going to be mm. great. It's going to be dope. They had another idea about um it's gonna i was gonna call it neon god i dropped this but it was called neon god and it was about an atheist who started a religion just to prove that there is no such thing as god Mm. then i an atheist started a cult and uh i'm i'm gonna prove one day that maybe there's a god (laughs) like i don't know Mm. like maybe i'm kind of leaning more agnosticism these days neon Mm. i got I got about four chapters into Neon before I realized it was very, very, very cynical and uh-huh. um, actually would provide almost no value to anybody. It would sound like a pissed off atheist ranting against religion. So I decided to scrap that specific project. Um, but uh, as anybody who's listening as can see, as a creator, um, I've got like six projects in various stages of completion. Mm. But of, of all of them, only two have ever seen the light of day. You know, and that's another thing too is people create their first thing and it's their baby. Yeah. And it's like the coolest thing ever. And the entire world needs to see it. And I'm the next JK Rowling. I'm the next Stephen mm-hmm. King. Mm-hmm. And bro, like get three concepts in before you start publishing. Like yeah. like like just wait a second. Hold your motherfucking horses. Like, cause like that first concept, chances are it sucks. There's no way the day that Tatiana said to me, Hey boo, wanna make a comic? right (laughs) there's no way in fuck that i would have been able to come up with a concept like that resurrectionist one Mm -hmm. there's no way it's just not possible yeah so what you got for me i don't know i don't know what i got i mean it just uh, that does remind me of when i first started the original nick show i wanted to be I i had a little bit too ambitious you know ideas coming in from uh I wanted to be the next Rooster Teeth. I I did gaming. I did game reviews of like crappy little web games, you know, Xbox 360 games. And then I did music for a little bit. And then I went to animation. Then I went back to gameplay, went back to animation. Then a, a whole summer where I did uh, a lot of gameplay. Then I did the art review, not the art review, the art presentation, then the art or the video game review then now just now things are starting to come together with uh the podcast i put up on the original Nick show then i was like i'll give it its own spot so and then all my gaming stuff i was like i don't want the original Nick show to be gaming anymore it's not it's not what it's about it's more voice acting and things like that so it's i i see where you're coming from mine is a little bit different though you guys have physical beautiful art and mine's just making youtube videos <laughs> Hey, that's that's beautiful art as well, my friend. It absolutely is. Don't believe it isn't for a second. It's a different yeah, type, but it is it's all different art for sure. There's another. There's a. I, I mean, I guess if there's like uh, one thing, uh, like all your viewers should understand is every beautiful piece of art that Nick has shown you since it started. I did not draw. I do. I mm. can't draw to save my life. And so I think Nick would agree with me. Um, maybe, hopefully. And yeah. that is, if you have a cool concept. First of all, explore it. I'm just saying, like, maybe not release it, but explore it. Exactly. Check it out. You got all the time in the world, my friend. Check it out. Okay? Mm -hmm. But the thing is, is then after you've explored it, uh, okay, the the reason I'm bringing this up is because I know a lot of people who are like, dude, I got this cool concept. Mm -hmm. You know, it's about a world of futuristic robotic dildos and, like, (laughs) they're they're having a vagina war. You know what I mean? (laughs) And they're like, it's, like, the coolest thing ever, but I can't draw. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, find somebody who can find someone to draw for you. Yeah. Yeah. And then pay them. Like, like, is it that difficult a concept? Like, mm-hmm. come on. Like, exactly. Like just find somebody who wants to draw cybernetic robotic dildo monsters. <laughs> <laughs> like, make it happen. Like, it's not that big a deal. And um, I try to tell people that all the time. Like, I can't draw. So mm-hmm. I found somebody who can draw. I just happen to be married to her. But um, and then like I found other people that can draw the work on other projects. Mm. And now I'm like a drawing kingpin who can't draw <laughs> a fucking straight line. Oh like, my I'm gosh. Like, 
I'm like known, like I'm like known for like the art my company puts out. And like, dude, I can barely draw a stick figure. I'm like, it's like, it's like the greatest thing in the world. And that's, that's one, th that's one key takeaway that I would give people is if you got a cool concept, find people to help you execute it. Cause, um, rolling solo is just crazy. So like, mm -hmm. so like Nick has co-hosts on Lorecast. I do. I, right? That's, that's why it's so not successful, but it's more coherent than, uh, what what all my other stuff has been exactly because mm -hmm. like having other people like it helps like other humans like people want to like own their shit like super hard and, yeah but they forget that rebecca sugar has an entire team exactly making steven universe you know what i mean like mm -hmm. and that they have like adventure time like you know old buddy what's his what's his name pendleton, old buddy ward. From adventure. pendleton ward gets all the credit but yeah they have big writers meetings where they all come up with ideas together like it's not like pendleton ward came up with the entire series front to back like he probably didn't even design the anime. Well, maybe he did. Pendleton Ward's very talented. But we'll uh, see how it goes. Absolutely. Thank you so much for coming on. I love talking to you guys every chance I get. And uh, thank you for all the art that you have provided for for me, you know, and uh, with me on some things uh, for the many years that I've known you. So thank you guys. Uh, you, I'll put all the links down to all their social media and stuff and the, uh, their website and down in the description below i thank you guys so much for watching and for sure we will see you guys in the next episode of lorecast anything to say thank before you. i go just that i love your face and i think you're amazing and thank you for being patient with me. all right thank you so much we'll see you guys next uh next sunday i believe so thank you guys